I want to talk about filing payroll taxes. So how do you calculate pay and report employment taxes? Okay, so this is basically a business owner's guide to payroll taxes. I want you to stick around till the end of this conversation because you are going to love it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, RT, or vodka, and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, I want to speak about filing payroll taxes. How do you actually calculate, pay, and report employment taxes? So this is for, this is a business owner's guide to payroll taxes. One thing you need to understand here is that employers are required to deposit employment taxes and report those taxes on a quarterly basis in most states so employment taxes include withholding for from employees paychecks to cover income taxes federal and where applicable state and local as well as the employees share of social security and medicare taxes what is called fica so this also include the employer's share of fica as well as federal and state unemployment taxes so the failure to properly withhold and deposit taxes can result in significant penalties for employers so let's quickly define. So number one, definition. I really want to uh, clarify things from the get-go. So let's identify employment taxes. So employment taxes are federal and state taxes related to employees' taxable income. Very important, taxable income. So these taxes include income tax withholding based on information provided to provided by employees on Form W-4. Remember, this is a form that you give to employees when they actually join the company. Okay, so this tax is paid exclusively by employees and actually W-4, I mean, employees can actually, uh, they can update their W-4 at any time during the year, not a problem. So, so number one, we have income tax withholding based on information provided by employees on Form W-4. So you also have FICA. So FICA is comprised of Social Security and Medicare taxes and is paid equally by employers and employees. So the social security portion is referred to as old age survivors and disability insurance or osd and provides benefits to retirees spouses and former spouses as well as dependent children in some cases and disabled individuals under retirement age the medicare portion allows those age 65 and older plus certain other individuals to qualify for part a medicare coverage with no additional cost plus coverage through part b c and d for an additional premium you also have FUDA. so FUDA is actually federal unemployment tax paid exclusively by employers you also have suda so suda is state unemployment tax so this is paid by employers although a few states require some employee contribution so those are the four things you need to understand when we talk about employment taxes. So you have income tax withholding based on the on form W-4. You have FICA, you have FUDA, and you have SUDA. Let's talk about the owner's duties. Very important. It's very important to understand employer tax responsibilities. So employers have several mandatory tasks in handling payroll taxes. So they have to figure income tax withholding and other employment taxes. They have to deposit all employment taxes according to a set deposit schedule with an exception for a very small, very small employer. They have to report quarterly about their employment taxes covering income tax withholding and FACA with an annual report for a small employer. Okay, so we have Form 940 and 941. And the, the employers also have to report annually to employees and the Social Security Administration about employees' tax payment. They also have an annual FUDA reporting. And there is a state-level reporting, too, when it comes to SUDA. Okay, so this is important. So when we talk about mandatory employer payroll taxes, so payroll taxes are required to be handled by employers who can be penalized if not done properly. So there are a variety of payroll taxes, some paid by employers, some paid by employees, and some by both. But in all cases, it's up to employers to deposit them. So you as an employer, you have the ultimate burden to report and deposit 
the uh, the taxes to the IRS and other state authorities. So we have federal income taxes. So income tax withholding from employees' paycheck is designed to cover what they will owe in federal income tax for the year. So this includes employees' income taxes as well as Social Security and Medicare taxes. So for certain employees, it also includes an additional Medicare tax. Okay, All states except Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming, which have no income tax, and New Hampshire and Tennessee, which do not tax wages, require employers to withhold some income tax from uh, employees' paychecks. Some cities, including New York City and Philadelphia, also have income taxes, which means additional wage withholding. Very important. So, in a handful of locations, other withholding is required to cover short-term disability, paid family leave, and unemployment benefits. So, we have, uh, so employers have to also take care of Social Security tax, that's the FICA, the, the FUTA that I just uh, spoke about, the Federal Unemployment Tax Act. They have to take care of uh, the SUDA, the state unemployment tax. Okay, but The thing is, states have the responsibility of paying unemployment benefits to eligible workers who are involuntarily terminated. Those laid off other than for gross misconduct or who are furloughed, they, they actually qualify. So to fund this liability, states impose unemployment tax on employers. You also have the additional Medicare tax Okay, that you have to think about. Let's talk about compliance. So, you need to understand payroll tax responsibilities and comply. So, one thing we have seen in our research is that payroll tax responsibilities are extensive. They include figuring income tax withholding, federal and where applicable state and local, depositing payroll taxes, and filing various returns, you know, which are really, really important. And they have to file those returns to report payroll activities. So how do you actually calculate employer payroll? Employer payroll taxes. So payroll taxes are figured according to an employee's Form W-4. This is where everything starts. Everything starts on Form 1040, uh, on Form W-4. So whatever the employee puts on that Form W-4 will tell the, uh, the, the employer what kind of tax brackets they are in and what kind of withholding the employer has to do. So the, the Form W-4 tells the employer the employee's marital status, so his or her marital status, and whether additional withholding should be made to cover certain personal taxes to which an employee may be entitled to that will reduce his or her income taxes. If no W-4 is provided, then an employer withholds as if the employee were single with no other adjustments. This is why it's really important if you are an employee listening to this to this show, you want to you want to automatically and reflexively file from form. Uh, you need to file form W-4. Okay, employers re relying on outside payroll service providers, such as paychecks, for example, can leave the calculations to them. In other words, if you outsource the whole thing, you can basically tell. You can actually leave uh, the service provider to figure things out. Some employers who do payroll in-house use software or rely on tables provided by the IRS in Circle or E to calculate payroll taxes, okay? So when we talk about payroll tax compliance, we are speaking about payroll tax calculation, payroll tax payments, filing of payroll taxes with the appropriate agencies. We are speaking about federal, but also state and local agencies. We are speaking about making sure that there, the, the employer or the service provider looks for time savings and reduce risk of penalties for late or inaccurate payments. This has to be something going on all the time, okay? And uh, you basically, you can use uh, payroll software. You want to, you want, you can also make sure that you prepare and file your amended return. So long story short, you can do things yourself in-house or you can actually outsource the whole thing. Okay, when we talk about, uh, there are certain forms that are required when calculating and submitting payroll taxes. One thing I want to say here is that it depends on the, um, on the state you are actually located in. And uh, those, those state, those uh, those requirements are different based on the state, okay? Let me quickly talk about tax deposits. So, I want to give you an overview of tax returns and deposits. So, employers, I just want to quickly, uh, re I just want to quickly reiterate that employers have the responsibility to file employment-based tax returns and deposit employment taxes 
according to set deadlines. They can outsource the task to a service provider, such as Paychex or ADP, or they can do it themselves, okay? But whatever happens here is that if the employer fails to do so, the employer may be subject to failure to file and failure to pay penalties. What's more, responsible persons in the company who failed to deposit trust fund taxes amounts withheld from employees paychecks may be subject to a 100% personal liability. Personal liability. This is very important. Okay, So this trust fund recovery penalty is triggered when a person with the authority to make payments, the payment decisions, willfully fails to deposit the taxes. So the possibility of those penalties means employers must get things right. Okay, So how much you should withhold? Everything is based on what your employee puts on Form W-4. Very important, okay? Now, the withholding forms. So, all employees are required to complete a Form W-4. This is employees' withholding certificate to provide the employer with information needed to compute withholding. For new employees, employers must also require them to complete Form I-9 to verify that they are legally eligible to work in the United States. And it's also advisable for, it's really advisable for employers to have employees complete Form 8850. You can see on the screen. This is basically a form employers must submit to the state workforce agency to determine whether the new employee falls within a targeted group that entitles the employer to a work opportunity tax credit. It's really important, okay? So when we talk about employer tax deposits, all payroll taxes must be, ta they must be deposited with the government in a timely manner. So the IRS sets the tax deposit deadline for employers. So those deadlines depend on the amount of deposit. So you, you, you can have semi-weekly schedules are for the largest employers and monthly schedules are used by the majority of employers. Some payments may be made with either the Form 941 or Form 944, depending on certain criteria. Okay, So if you are interested in learning more about this, you can either ask, uh, you can ask us a question below or you can just uh, refer to pages 25, 26, Depositing Taxes in IRS Publication 15. For further details, you can see on the screen, this here is the form. Let's talk about tax returns here. So what kind of tax returns are really important when we talk about payroll taxes, okay? So let's first talk about the tax returns. So employers must file a variety of tax returns related to employment taxes. So on the federal level, these forms include Form 940. So this is basically an employer's annual FUDA tax return. So FUDA is the Federal Unemployment Tax Act return. Okay. You have Form 941, which is basically an employer's quarterly tax return reporting withholding and the employer's share of a FICA. Okay. And this is a good, I mean, during, during COVID, during COVID, employers use this to claim a credit for employment taxes to cover payments if they were a small and mid-sized business of mandatory sick leave and mandatory family leave, okay? But but usually this is a form, this form is for quarterly tax return reporting. You also, one thing I, I want to say here is that if, if uh, employment taxes are not sufficient to cover this required payments to employees, then employers can uh, file form 7200 to obtain an advanced credit of employment taxes. But again, this is this is this applied during COVID time. Now it no, it no longer applies unless the government decides otherwise. So we have five, we have we have a form 940. We have form 941. We also have form 943. So this is basically the employer's annual return for agricultural employees. We also have form 944. This is for a small employers eligible to pay employment taxes annually instead of depositing them according to a schedule so if you have a small operation and uh, the IRS has uh, granted you the opportunity to file your form annually you use form 944 you also have form 945 which is a federal income tax return used to report non-payroll payments including pension distributions and uh, Employers must also report withholding to employees in the Social Security Administration. So for this purpose, they must file Form W-2 with employees and Form W-3 with the Social Security Administration. So this is basically a transmittal form that summarizes all W-2s. So copies of all W-2s are included with the W-3. Okay, And uh, so employers must file returns by set deadlines. 
and usually they can file electronically through an authorized e-file provider or software they, they purchase for this purpose. And uh, how often do you have to file taxes? Well, most employers' returns are filed annually, as I said before. However, the employer's federal return, Form 941, is filed quarterly. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about how to calculate, pay, and report payroll taxes. And before the break, I was talking to you about the fact that uh, most employers' returns are filed annually. However, the employer's federal return, Form 941, is filed quarterly. One thing I have to say here is that states, all states, have their own filing schedules for their returns. Okay, so you want to check, you want to check with your your state tax revenue or finance department to have more information. Now let's talk about submission here because it's important that once you have done all the calculation, you have to submit the, the deposit, right? So once you have calculated your business employment taxes, how do you submit them? Well, payroll taxes must be deposited electronically through the Federal Electronic Tax Payment System or EFTPS. So small employers who are permitted to pay their employment tax when filing their annual employer tax return can opt to use EFTF, EFTPS also. One thing I want to say here is that the IRS has to grant you specifically the uh, the opportunity to file your uh, your taxes annually. It has to be it has to come from the IRS. Okay. Now, how do you f for state employment taxes? You want to check again with your state authorities to f determine how to deposit employment taxes. Now, how do you handle? independent contractors or self-employed individuals well one thing you need to understand here there's a clear gap when we talk about independent contractors and self-employed individuals they are not employees right however employers should review the status of the worker to ensure that the individual is properly classified as an independent contractor businesses that engage them are now responsible for any employment taxes on payments made to them so these workers pay self-employment tax on their net earnings from uh, self-employment, in other words, their profits from their business activities, which is essentially the employee and employer share of FICA. So if a self-employed person also has wages from a job, the wages are coordinated with the SE, the self-employment tax, so that the wage-based ceiling can be properly applied. If total payments to such worker in the year are six hundred dollars or more, the business must file an annual information return. This is an information return, Form 1099 NEC, to report the payment to the worker and to the IRS. Okay, so this is important. So NEC stands for non-employee contractor. Okay, now if you have uh, out-of-state employees, the general rule the general rule is that. You need to follow the tax regulations in the state where your employees work, in the state where they work. For example, if your company is based in a state without income tax, but you employ someone who works from home in a state that does require in income tax withholding, you would, be re you would be responsible for collecting and paying the state taxes for that employee. Okay, And some states have reciprocal agreements that allow out-of-state employees to only pay income tax in their resident state instead of being taxed both in both their resident and non-resident work states. So if no reciprocal agreement is offered, you can arrange for a courtesy withholding to deduct both sets of state taxes during the regular pay cycles so that the employee will not owe they will not owe it at all when they file their annual taxes. So those are things real to think about. So I want to give you some piece of advice if you're a small business owner. So meeting federal and state payroll requirements is a big responsibility. Okay, remember that. And the IRS penalties for employment tax non-compliance are steep. So it is strongly recommended that you outsource the process to a reputable payroll service provider to avoid mistakes. Okay. Alternatively, if you decide to run your own payroll, you can consult professionally with a CPA, an EA, or a tax law attorney so that you are sure that you are deducting the proper amount from your employee's paychecks each pay period so you can save thousands of dollars in fines down the road. Before we close to this conversation, let me quickly give you a checklist. So I really want you to really have this checklist in mind 
very important so that you avoid mistakes and pay a lot of uh, fines okay so once you so how do you actually file your payroll taxes so once you have distributed your employees paychecks you are then responsible for paying and reporting payroll taxes to the IRS. so here are the steps i want you i want you to really keep those steps in your mind and i want you to look on the screen right now so you can actually uh, learn you can remember this so here are the steps you will need to take post payroll to meet federal and state requirements number one federal tax deposits so all employee tax withholdings and your share of FICA taxes must be paid to the IRS and if applicable state government on a semi-weekly or monthly basis depending on your total tax liability according to form 943 okay semi-weekly or monthly basis so the IRS states that you must use electronic funds transfer to make federal tax deposits so that's number one number one federal tax deposits number two your FUTA tax deposit so federal unemployment taxes are made to the IRS on a quarterly basis not semi-weekly not monthly but on a quarterly basis number two number three you want to file form 941 so this is the form that actually allows you to report your total payroll tax liability and payments from the previous quarter and you must file it with the IRS on a quarterly basis number three number four you want to file form 940 so form 940 reports your total unemployment tax liability and payments throughout the year and you must file this with the IRS annually annually not quarterly not semi-weekly not monthly and you also want to file state tax report so if your state requires you to collect and pay income and unemployment taxes you will need to report this according to your state's schedule and regulations so it's also important it's always important to actually contact your state tax department your state revenue department your state finance department to have a clear idea of their requirements to have a clear idea of uh, the the guidelines you need to follow if you want to comply with the uh, because because the bottom line the bottom line here is that you do not want to run afoul of any regulation either at the federal level or at the state level because the fines are too steep okay non-compliance fines are very steep and you don't want that Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about uh, filing payroll taxes, how to calculate, pay, and report employment taxes. So I gave you a business owner's guide to payroll taxes. So we spoke, uh, I gave you a definition of uh, employment taxes. We spoke about your employer tax responsibility, compliance, tax deposits, tax returns, the submission process, and the checklist you need to have in mind so that you never run afoul of any, any regulations and uh, guidelines. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.